Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access a Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. Uh, best way I can describe this market, uh, for all you guys who are fans of the NBA, there's something uh, called the one and done. You guys remember the one and done rule, which basically the NBA says that you need to go to at least one year of college or now in one of these uh, G League or uh, IBL leagues, but you need at least one year uh, so then you could you could enter yourself in the NBA draft. And the most notable one-and-done players throughout the years, probably Carmelo Anthony, probably uh, Kevin Durant, um, Anthony Davis, I believe, went to Kentucky one year as well. But the, the one guy who stands out is Ben Simmons, right? And Ben Simmons, for you guys who don't know, uh, Ben Simmons went to LSU. Not only did the guy not want to uh, play more than one year, he only finished half of a semester uh, in his full year to be eligible for the NBA draft. He got picked number one in the draft. There was a lot of excitement, a lot of anticipation. Uh, you know, hope springs eternal. And all that excitement, just like that, was done. And that's exactly where we are right now. We are in a one-and-done market. What you're looking at right now is Netflix. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but this is a one-and-done market. This is basically that you go through your charts the night before, uh, you look at your your hit list for the day, whether it's the long side, the short side, whatever the case may be, uh, and you wait for that confirmation. You really do. You wait for that confirmation, and you can go through the whole day after that first initial hope, optimism, and all that good stuff that goes along with being that number one selection, that one and done prospect. And then next thing you know, you know, four and a half, five and a half, six hours go by. And you realize the market has done absolutely nothing. And that's kind of how we've been for the last, you know, pretty much for the last four or five days. And again, don't get me wrong. There's still some really good opportunities. You got Microsoft, you got NVIDIA today, Tesla a couple of days ago. So you're getting opportunities. It's not about uh, not getting the opportunities. It's pretty much what happens after that. And there's a lot of theories that people are sitting there and trying to figure out, well, maybe it's, you know, we're waiting for earnings. Well, we're here, right? We're earnings seasons are, are, are here on Netflix, which was probably, uh, you know, one of the craziest things that you could probably see uh, played out this this afternoon. Uh, Netflix came out with earnings, very mixed earnings. The initial reaction was literally about a 40-point drop. Uh, at first, I thought this was, you know, like e-signal once in a while, it gives like a bad print, right? This wasn't a bad print. They, they sold the stock off about 35, 40 points, just like that. And as of right now, uh, Netflix is up, you know, up about a buck, buck and change uh, after hours from the four o'clock close. So absolutely uh, incredible action. And if you really look at uh, the price action, what the market's doing, that's been kind of the deal. You know, you have this big move up. Like I could give a per perfect example today, right? You had you had Microsoft, right, with a really, really big move up this morning. Okay, some news came out that their uh, AI chips are going to be better than uh, the NVIDIA chips. You have this massive, massive move, like really aggressive move, went up like $5, $7 and sold off the, same, the, the rest of the day. Like NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA shook off. Here's the crazy part. NVIDIA shook off, right? Shook off the, the, this whole news, rallied, and then it got really, you know, just got hit for the rest of the day. So we're in a really weird market, okay? Uh, the opportunities are there, absolutely but you really have to be very, very specific and you have to be ultra on top of your research because if you miss your window, there's a good chance you're not going to get another opportunity. Or if you are going to get another opportunity, it's going to be in something like a C, D, E, or F uh, level setup, which which nobody really wants to trade against. One of those scenarios that we always talk about, the market's open, that's great, right? It's absolutely great, but it's all it's just important to, to trade the value. It's not because the market's open, it's because we get value uh, that we are trading. We're in a very unique environment right now that the market is just kind of dying out, like really, really dying out. And again, unless you have different quotes than I do, because maybe I'm trading the Bangladesh exchange, but unless your 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 quotes a little off than I do, I mean, every every trader is basically looking at the market uh, exactly the same way. I mean, you really have to, uh, you know, really have to watch the option flow. Like this morning, for example, we're watching the video. 
uh, they started coming for the June three hundred dollar calls one after another after another after another and, and, and started spiking. Started spiking. Uh, took out the opening range highs of, uh, of, of 78, traded up to 80, took out the 80, went to 81, and then yada, 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 sold off about five, six dollars just like that moments later. Uh, so, you know, it, we're in a very unique situation. Um, I, I think this earnings quarter is finally going to, in my opinion, again, I could be dead wrong, you know, kind of get it, get us out of this kind of a doldrum. And the way the market's trading, it, it feels like we're like three days away from the 4th of July, or at least a couple of days away from like, um, Memorial Day, it feels like people are, are, are off. And I know it sounds crazy, but it, that's what it feels like. I know a lot of you guys uh, feel the same way. But the good thing about trading beta, and we've been always talking about this, uh, you know, whether you're trading, you know, the Teslas of the world, the Amazons, the, you know, the Metas, uh, the Netflix and the videos, so forth and so on. The good part about trading all those stocks, okay, you only need one, right? And today was a perfect example. Uh, we had a beautiful, absolutely beautiful move on NVIDIA uh, opening range highs from that 378 level all the way up to the 381. And then the market went to dark, did absolutely nothing for the rest of the day. And you can see by so many charts, you could literally look at so many charts. This is, by the way, this is the Q's chart for the last four days. Guys, look at look at this channel that we're in for the last four days of the Q's. We keep on bouncing back and forth in that channel. Now, again, the, the, the argument is, well, you know, you can short the top of the channel and go along the bottom of the channel. Yeah, that only, you know, that only works once or twice. You know, eventually that top of the channel will get, uh, you know, will get confirmed or the bottom channel will get confirmed. And next thing you know, you're really uh, squeezing hard and you're begging for your life. So you don't want to do that. Tomorrow you have Tesla, right? Uh, you know, look, if you look at the chart on Tesla, right? If you look at the chart on Tesla, Tesla's now... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tomorrow will be day 10 under the 50 day moving average. Okay. Uh, that means it's building a base below supply. Obviously, that's kind of a moot point when, it, when they release their earnings. Uh, all eyes are, are obviously going to be in a very, uh, you know, very anticipated earnings report. Uh, if you look at the options market, we saw some 170 puts come in today, not a lot. Uh, we saw some some 195, 200 calls come in, not a lot. So this is the first time going into a, a Tesla earnings season that you really don't have a big monster institutional representation uh, money flow going into uh, going into tomorrow. At least for Netflix today, we saw you know we saw a slew of 300 puts being traded, and, and they looked like heroes for the first probably like first three to five minutes. And then they looked up five minutes later, it's back to 335. So they're all going to, going to expire worthless. And probably all the 350 and 375 calls that we saw early in the month, uh, they're going to be, well, maybe the 350s have a shot if, 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 if Netflix wakes up. But speaking of Netflix, you know, let's see if this thing could actually take out the 10-day moving average. Right now, it's about, like I said, up about a buck. Uh, from from the closing price after being down about 35 40 let's watch netflix for tomorrow right because if it can reclaim the 10-day moving average who knows maybe it could go back to the macro level that we've been watching for the 350 so it's something i definitely definitely want to watch i'm assuming we're going to get a lot more liquidity tomorrow on netflix than we had uh, in in days and weeks past so that's gonna be a good thing but i, I honestly believe that the value in the market for the majority of names are in stocks like we've been seeing for the last you know, several days. Like, let me give you guys a couple of examples of names that I'm watching. You're not going to see a lot of, you're not going to see a lot of beta uh, just because, you know, just because, you know, we're, we're kind of in the middle of a range. But look at, you know, look at charts like DraftKings. Look how good DraftKings looks. Guys, look how close DraftKings is. If it starts taking out those February highs, this thing could really, really go. Look at the stock O-N-N, O-N-N, right? Beautiful looking chart. We had a couple of really nice pivots in this thing early in the month. Uh, this thing is maybe a day two away from maybe starting taking out uh, the top of the chart. That looks really good. Look at Hims. First, when I saw Hims, you ever see you ever see that um, that online thing Hims for men? I thought it was that that erectile uh, you know ED place. Who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But this damn chart looks really really good. Uh, expansion volume. You got a massive expansion volume. Look at the last time you had expansion volume. That was on. On February the 28th and the next day followed through. Well, today you kind of have the same carbon copy. You have an expansion channel forming uh, today. Close above the linear regression line. Let's watch this hymns. This thing 
uh, looks great as well. Uh, the only one I want to watch, well, I have a couple of short setups that I'm watching for tomorrow. Obviously, Tesla's coming out with earnings tomorrow, but who knows? There's a shot. Maybe they sell this thing off before. I've been watching this downside pivot now for like three, four days, and it's just not confirming. It really is not. So it's kind of irritating me that we, we didn't get this pre uh, pre-earnings trade before that happens. But obviously tomorrow uh, after the close, we're going to get a better cycle of, of data on the on, uh, Tesla earnings. Uh, again, the argument is, well, they've been cutting all these, you know, all these prices all across the board on all their models. You know, it's a sign of desperation. Who the hell knows, right? We Look, you can debate till your, your head turns blue. Tomorrow, Tesla is either going to be up after the uh, after the market or it's going to be down significantly. Again, I know it's a really, really you know trivial thing to say, but that's the only conversation piece that's necessary. Raw data is not enough. It's all about uh, price action towards uh, towards uh, especially towards the conference call, which Elon uh, will give a little bit more color. If you look at uh, the indexes, uh, the spies, you know, that it continues to kind of drift higher, right? You know, drift higher. If you look at the Qs. You know, we're kind of stuck in this little channel, but it's attempting. Uh, the one thing that I didn't like what I saw today, it was a double top from uh, the January, February, March, April, uh, April 4th. Uh, April 4th, you can see uh, 321.63 was the high from April 4th. Uh, today's high, da, 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 321.40s. Watch 321.63 tomorrow for the cues in case Netflix, you know, takes all the beta names up higher again, because if we can start building above this 321.63 level on the Qs, maybe we start pushing to the top of the channel here of 324. So again, majority of technology has a lot of, of work to do. Uh, the banks are doing their part. They're obviously uh, coming out with some pretty good numbers. They continue the earnings uh, season, I believe, tomorrow uh, as well. But obviously the, the, the actor... Uh, the role of choice is going to be hero or goat, and that's going to be Elon Musk and the greatest stock that ever traded both ways, long and short, Tesla. That's not an opinion. That is a fact. Guys, God bless everybody. Stay patient. Again, remember, these markets are very, very finical, very, very finicky. Now, you know, the majority of your career, you're going to have a lot of great organic flow, both to the upside, to the downside. Now, it's just one of those times that it feels like a virgin and prom night right? You kind of know what to do, but you're embarrassed or you're a little shy. You, you feel like you're going to do it wrong, right? Welcome to the new reality. And hopefully this new reality uh, ends very, very soon. Guys, God bless. Stay blessed. Stay in business. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care.